All right, so Ed's got a problem, all right? He's got a fever. And unfortunately, his fever is not one that's going to be solved easily. He has low-cost basis mutual funds. Wellington, uh, Vanguard Dividend Growth is something else. And, he want, and they're in taxable accounts. And he wants to convert those to, uh, uh, to ETFs. All right. right now, he's in a, the top tax bracket. And uh, a couple years now, he'll be in a lower tax bracket, but it won't be you know, 10 or 12%. It's going to be higher. It'll probably be 28 by that time because the tax bill for Trump will go away. All right, so Ed, you got a problem, man. Um, <laughs> because if you were to sell uh, to move those shares, those positions to ETFs, you get long-term capital gain. And that 35% of it is your tax bracket. Well, you're also going to have a 3.8% for net investment income tax as well. So essentially, it's going to cost you 23.8. I wouldn't do that. Whereas if you wait a couple of years and your tax bracket drops to 28%, well, still going to cost you 23.8. Now, I don't know if that's single. I don't know what his situation is from an income perspective. But, but it's nothing, I mean, in my opinion, and just wait for the market to take a, you know, take a fall. But there's really not much you can do. But the thing that stinks is with the Vanguard Dividend Growth Fund in Wellington, he's getting lots of taxable income there. Maybe if you have some individual positions and in stocks or something like that, or ETFs that, are, that have, are down, you could do some tax loss R thing, but... Yeah, this is the problem that I think a lot of people have is that we haven't had any significant down market for any simple amount of time, for any uh, amount of time, uh, really going back to almost 15 years ago now, 2009, to eight, seven, eight, nine. And so because of that, uh, if you didn't, if you weren't doing task loss harvesting during, you know, from the February to March 23rd chaos, you know, you're kind of SOL. And the funds themselves, too, don't forget, also have capital gains in there. And this is what, as he knows this, it's just not much you can do, brother. Um, you just have to get the 1099s each and every year. I certainly, oh, good boy. I certainly wouldn't do anything until, until later. Um, oops. Oh, boy. I got a hole in my thing. I got to pick up Pablo's poop. A hole right there, so I'm gonna have to be very gentle here so I don't get this on my hand. Good boy, Pablo. All right, good boy. All right, so you're gonna have to uh, look, this is the epitome of high class financial planning YouTube channel, isn't it? Woo, you don't get much more freaking uh, professional than this right here. Come on, where you going, bud? Anyway, so uh, lesson learned. I mean, but uh, let's not, I mean, let's not pretend. That it's just, you, you, you've made a ton of money on these funds. That's why you have such a low-cost basis, right? So you've made money. So the worst-case scenario is you pay capital gain and ordinary income tax on any dividends. You pay capital gain and qualified dividend tax. Obviously, Wellington's going to have some ordinary income in there from the bond funds as well. But, man, that's still a pretty good position to be in, brother. You made money. Now, I don't know if Ed's single. I think I already asked this. I'm not sure. So I'm not sure if... And I don't even know what state he lives in. There's just not much you can do if you don't have any gain, offset of losses to offset the gains. So I just bite the bullet and let the chips fall where they may. Um, the only benefit he's got now is that the dividend rates are so low, there shouldn't be much income from the... You know, I don't know how much he's got in these funds, but... It's uh, you just got to bite the bullet, man, because I don't see any option. Anyway, hope this helps. If you do see an opportunity for a loss, like let's just, I have no idea what Vanguard uh, Dividend Growth Fund did from February to March of this year. That would be a good time to sell to get out. Just keep your eyes apprised for that. Like the next time a market crashes, you know, sell that sucker, you know, wait 30 days, get back in. But why, I mean, just go to an ETF at that point. Um, I guess you could. Maybe wait towards the election, you know. Either way, there's going to be some opportunity in these elections coming up, regardless of who wins. 
you know, there's always opportunity in the unknown. But the problem is you got such a low cost basis as it is. Eh, nah, I hope this helps. Good luck, good investing though, my friend. You're somebody we should mimic. All right, we'll see you.